Next up, we have Sigilyph, another in a long list of inspired Generation 5 designs. This thoroughly unique bird based on the Nazca lines fittingly appeared to trainers in Pokemon Black and White's Desert Resort. It's one of those Pokemon that fools you with its appearance. It looks like it has two eyes in the middle of its body, but those are really eye spots, whereas it's one true eye is on top of its body. Finally, Sigilyph was the guardian of an ancient city, now buried beneath the desert. Some of the remains of which, of course, can be explored by the player. Today, we'll be examining how Sigilyph performed in the competitive scene. And so, we ask, how good was Sigilyph actually? And also, how good was this shirt actually? That's right, False Wipe finally has merch and some nice ones too. If you like the question we ask in all of our videos as much as we do, be sure to pick up one of these awesome shirts or hoodies in a color you like with the link in the description below. And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Given all the new Pokemon added by Generation 5 with hilariously high base stats, the comparatively modest Sigilyph didn't get much immediate attention. But it did briefly have quite a legitimate role in a fairly early stage of Black and White 1 OU. Sand teams were focused on spreading paralysis and abusing it with the then legal Sandvale Garchomp, which would substitute until one of your attacks missed, which it would. Of course, even the mighty Chomp couldn't do all the work on its own. It needed a good defensive core supporting it before the time was right for it to reach havoc. Sigilyph had a brief period as a member of such sand teams' defensive course because of its ability, possibly the best in the game, the passive damage ignoring Magic Guard. This allowed it to effortlessly soak up all the otherwise endlessly irritating, crippling leech seeds, toxics, Jirachi body slams, and all sorts of burns. That wasn't all it could do either. It threatened nearly the entire tier, especially physical attackers, with burns of its own by carrying a flame orb, then cycle shifting the burn over onto the opponent. This already made it a pain to switch into since it completely invalidated would-be psychic answers like Tyranitar and Jirachi, but that still wasn't all because Sigilyph could also boost its defenses on both sides through cosmic power, which would also boost the strength of its stored power. This made Sigilyph a true nightmare for stall and an irritation for most teams in general. Sadly, this didn't last. Once the player base became accustomed to Sigilyph, it quickly tumbled out of usage. There were multiple reasons. One, Sigilyph's bulk wasn't great by OU standards, so it really needed several cosmic powers before it became unbreakable, and thanks to OU's immense power level, preventing it from doing so wasn't at all a tall task. Two, this first issue was compounded by Sigilyph's half-flying typing, which left it with a lot of weaknesses to common OU attacking types like Ice, Electric, and Rock. Three, Sigilyph couldn't do instant, immediate damage since unboosted stored power had a base power of 20. Four, even once set up, Sigilyph was stopped quite hard by several common OU Pokemon, like specifically Defense Roar. Or Heatran and Taunt Swords Dance Gliscor, neither of which feared burn from it either. And you know what Pokemon had none of these issues? Another Generation 5 Psychic type with Magic Guard Ryu Nicholas, which became prominent and excellent to the point of players arguing over whether it should be banned. Sigilyph, on the other hand, faded away. Nevertheless, at one point, it did have a genuine place in Generation 5 OU, fighting alongside, against, and at the same time as some of the mightiest threats ever allowed in the tier, like Sandrush, Extra Drill, Sandvale, Garchomp, and Thunderous. So where did Sigilyph go after this? As it wasn't quite cut out for UU either, for largely the same stat-centric issues as in OU. But once it landed in RU, it really came into its own. It didn't bother with the cosmic power set that had become its signature during its brief stint in OU either. No, far from it. While yes, the cosmic power set could be run, it generally wasn't what the player base preferred, and for good reason. RU was a tier where Sigilyph's highest stat, its base 103 special attack, allowed it to pose quite the instant threat, especially because its wonderful magic guard ability allowed it to run life orb free of recoil, essentially free of drawback. As a result, it hit much of the metagame with tremendous immediate force, especially since it had such excellent coverage moves. For example, Steel types weren't actually useful resist to Sigilus of Stab Psychic, since they were swiftly deleted by Heat Wave. This just made that already spammable Psychic even more spammable. Dark types weren't exactly safe either. They were hit quite hard by Sigilus's secondary stab, Air Slash. Sigilus didn't have trouble breaking through too many things, especially with the spike support that was so easy to 
come by in Generation 5, are you? And those few things it might still struggle with, such as Uxie or a super bulky Slow King, could be dealt with via something else easy to slap onto a team. A Pursuit user. Sigilith did have to fear Pursuit itself, though not from the most common user as Cavalier, thanks to Heatwave, so that was already a bonus. And plus, Team Preview and its own offensive power helped immensely in formulating a game plan to play around Pursuit if one did see that Drapion or Spirit Tomb. Just a few good double switches away with Hazards down from putting them in Air Slash range. Speaking of spikes, Gen 5 Aryu was another tier with an immense emphasis on passive damage, seen most prominently not just in the infestation of Hazard stacking teams, but with the proliferation of Alomomola and its scalding, toxicing antics. Sigilith effortlessly ignoring these tactics and managing to match the longevity of such strategies that suffocated most offensive Pokemon was absolutely huge in giving offensive teams room to play around them. While most threats were on a timer, Sigilith was the exact opposite, sending in Alomomola's face without fear. What made Sigilith particularly dangerous was its excellent base 97 speed. This meant it easily got the jump on several other popular offensive Pokemon, most notably the hugely important Moltres, as well as Jinx, who at base 95 was already considered quite fast for its own ability to outrun Moltres. As if all that wasn't enough, Sigilith could also add Combine into the mix to make itself even more powerful, and a veritable one-hit KO machine that instantly dropped nearly everything in its path. Sigilith was an outstanding Pokemon in Gen 5 Aryu, one of the very best in fact, and most defining. And so overall, Sigilith had quite the auspicious debut generation. Sigilyph was largely overlooked in the hype over Generation 6's numerous flashy, powerful additions, and thus tumbled down to Anu, where it was instantly the source of controversy and debate for its Life Orb set absolutely shredded the tier. It was fast, it was strong, and it had all the coverage it needed. It was so instant in its devastation that often all it needed was attacking moves. No need to combine or roost, just an all-out assault with Psychic, Air Slash, Heat Wave, and Energy Ball to slam as much of the tier as hard as possible. And just when you thought all it would do was attack and try to pivot around it that way, then it would pull out a surprise combine and or roost and punish you for that assumption hard. It didn't end there either. Sigilyph could easily circumvent Sucker Punch with Substitute, which also allowed it to scout switches and ease prediction to ensure its moves were hitting targets as hard as possible. It ripped through balance and defensive teams, whose weak nature was usually compensated for by the power of passive damage. But that trick didn't work against Sigilyph. It was excellent against offensive teams, too. Its coveted base 97 speed was excellent in general, especially in getting the jump on the crowded, already considered fast base 95 tier. Sigilyph just ran circles around the metagame, pretty much. It was considered massively overpowered by an overwhelming percentage of the player base and was quickly, resoundingly banned from early XYNU. Sigilyph then looked for some usage in RU, and it showed promise, but it didn't really take off until Oras, where it established itself as one of the tier's most elite Pokemon once again. Its Life Orb set was again its go-to, and thanks to the 6th generation's addition of the Fairy-type Dazzling Gleam, it now had the option to mix in a coverage move to more effectively slam its previous enemy, Spirit Tomb. It also brought Flame Orb back, but in a slightly different way. Rather than using Cosmic Power and Psycho Shift, it chose to run Calm Mind and Air Slash. The set was similarly difficult to break, since Psycho Shifting burns to the opponent would effectively bolster Sigilyph's defense anyway, but the inclusion of Air Slash as Stab ensured that Sigilyph could actually instantly do meaningful damage. This was particularly important against something as dangerous as Virizion. Sigilyph's importance in the tier went beyond just its threat level, though that was of course a significant part of it, arguably just just as key as how it repeatedly reveled in taking advantage of the Pokemon almost impossible to take advantage of, a Loma Mola, and the balanced teams it was part of that came to be the most defining part of Aryu. Sigilyph matched up so well against huge portions of these teams, unable to hurt it too badly with direct damage and not giving a care for their otherwise suffocating passive damage. Besides dominating a Loma Mola, which was an incredible trait in and of itself, since a Loma Mola was one of the three best Pokemon in the tier, Sigilyph also had superb matchups against other top tier balanced staples in Registeel, Venusaur, and most variants of Defog Flygon, the latter two of which were the other two top three Pokemon in the tier. Of course, Sigilyph didn't just waltz in against these teams and win the game, it had to make good predictions and or work in conjunction with its team to work around roadblocks like UC, Deancey, and Pursuit users like Sneasel. However, none of these were insurmountable, and if it avoided Pursuit, which it often could do thanks to its fierce offensive output, all its user had to do was play carefully. 
Detroit. The central lift's excellent longevity gave it and its team plenty of room in breaking down such teams. Of course, central lift was excellent against offense as always, in addition to its fantastic speed tier and great power and coverage, which gave it great matchups against most opposing offensive threats. Its quadruple fighting resistance was also incredibly useful for effortlessly absorbing some of the most monstrous attacks in the tier. Sock's close combat and Metacham's high jump kick. As if all that wasn't enough, Sigil Lift could experiment to great effect. For instance, some players enjoyed great success with a surprise Focus Sash Thunderwave Sigil Lift that excelled against offense, completely turning the tables on faster Pokemon like Sneasel, Jolteon, Aerodactyl, Choice Scarfers, and Mega Glalie. So overall, Sigil Lift was absolutely top tier, an incredible, essential part of RU once again in Generation 6. Generation 7's massive power sent Sigil Lift tumbling down to NU again, and this time it was there to stay. But that doesn't mean it wasn't also quite good in RU as well. It was no longer the tier defining beast it had twice been, but it was still a legitimate important part of the metagame. Its classic Life Orb set had a new addition. Defog, which allowed Sigil Lift to provide crucial team support while remaining a fierce offensive threat. It lent its previous excellence against Registeel a new dimension. Sigil Lift didn't have to defog though, also be a threat of its own accord. Its main issue was that it had to compete with the thoroughly excellent Necrozma, but Sigil Lift did have its own distinct significant advantages, namely much higher speed and greater immediate power, which was valuable in more fast-paced offensive games. Sigil Lift's flaws stood out more than in previous generational iterations of the metagame game, its middling bulk most notably, and its speed wasn't as impressive as it had been, but its upsides were excellent, and many top players considered it to be among the more underrated choices in RU. And so Sigilif had a genuine place in its home tier once again. So NU. There, Sigilif returned to being an elite, defining force, its trusty life orb set ripping through the tier as always. It particularly enjoyed the fact that the tier's most common dark type by far, Incineroar, did not carry pursuit, so it was under much less duress to outlasted. However, even if other dark types did show up, Sigil Lift users were ready. They sometimes slotted in Protect in its fourth move slot, allowing them to safely scout the intentions of that choice bandit Sneasel threatening it. Protect wasn't just good for Pursuit either. It was also great to see if the ever-present Scarf Passimian would attack it or U-turn on it. It was a tremendously disruptive move in general. Sigil Lift had plenty of excellent options for that slot, like Roost, Defog, and even Thunder Wave. Another set emerged for Sigil Lift in Generation 7 though, Choice Specs. Pre Previously, it hadn't been given much thought since Sigil Lift quite liked the freedom to switch between coverage moves and because a Magic Guard Pokemon is the ideal user of Life Orb, but the sheer power of Choice Specs was really something to behold. It made an already strong Pokemon into an absolute rocket launcher of a threat. This wasn't the only thing that changed about Sigil Lift. Previously, it had only used Magic Guard, and how could you not? Well, with a Choice Specs Pokemon, you want to spam attacks so powerful that it almost doesn't matter if the opponent resists them or not. What if you had an ability that straight up remove resist altogether. That's right, one of Sigilus's other abilities was the amazing Tinted Lens, and this elevated its destructive power to staggering new heights. Its strength in conjunction with a lack of resist meant its size shock would now two-hit KO would-be checks like Delphox and Slowking. Physical walls like Steelix and Rhydon that could take size shocks all day would be blasted apart by Sigilus's similarly spammable Air Slash. There was nearly nothing that was safe against a spec Sigilus Assault. Now sure, it now had to be wary of South Rock for the first time in its career, and it was no longer the effortless switch into weak skulls it had been before, but that was a worthwhile price to pay for the nearly unstoppable destruction it would wreak upon the entire metagame. And that still wasn't the extent of everything Sigilith could do though. It had a new spin on its bulky Combine Roost set. First, rather than cycle shifting burns over it, it would either bulk itself out further with cosmic power, or it would use secondary stab and stored power, which was ruinous to stall teams. Second, since Sigilith wasn't using cycle shift, there was no need to run flame orb. Instead, Sigilith ran Flyenium Z. This was invaluable not just because it weakened knockoff and protected itself from item removal, but because it allowed Sigilith to deal a burst of enormous damage that was generally uncharacteristic of slow boosting bulky sweepers. This made it far more difficult to deal with after after just one combine, since it could quickly blow Incineroar away and then be well on its way to sweeping against an opponent who would now be highly limited in their options to check it. Sometimes it didn't even need the combine. The Z move gave it flexibility by allowing it to make the most of its great speed, the extra power letting it check something it outran, giving Sigilith more depth to its team support as well. Sigilith was excellent in every guise. It fit on all sorts of teams and for how difficult it was to handle defensively, was an immensely consistent in-battle performer. 
Armor. And as such, it was one of the best, most defining Pokemon in Generation 7 and you. In the earliest days of Sword and Shield Yu Yu, while Dynamax was still allowed, Sigilyph was a menace. It, alongside Braviary and Noivern, was one of the very best examples of why Stab Max Airstream was utterly ridiculous. Its Life Orb variant was elevated to new heights of terror. It was able to set up a combine against half the tier thanks to that ever useful passive damage immunity, turning the likes of tier staples Bronzong, Hippowdon, Zatu, Roserade, and others into opportunities to grab a boost and go berserk. Once it Dynamax, it may as well have been over, especially since Max Airstream speed boost would stick with it and proceed to make stored power even more ridiculously strong. Then Dynamax was banned and Sigilyph dropped to Aryu. It was still Yu Yu viable, particularly for its qualities as a solid offensive defogger, but his usefulness in this role was limited given the opportunity of Sandstream Gigalith. However, it would soon have to make do with this as it was almost instantly banned from Aryu. It was utterly obscene. It wasn't just broken with one set, it was broken with all of them. The classic Life Orb sets with three attacks and roots ripped teams apart as they always had their excellent blend of strength, speed, and longevity. Sigilyph was one of the very fastest Pokemon in the tier. This alone would have probably been too much for the meta, but as if that wasn't enough, some players slotted in Calm Mind over Roost and invalidated the ability of several of the tier's few faster Pokemon, like Charizard, to revenge kill Sigilyph, all while making it even more of a one-hit KO machine. Plus, half the meta game was easy setup fodder, so preventing the Calm Mind wasn't exactly an option either. Finally, Choice Specs Tinted Lens variants made several violent appearances, bloodying the tier even more than their Magic Guard counterparts had. Sigilyph received a quick ban and languished in RUBL, save for its sparse UU appearances, until the Isle of Armor, at which point it was released back into RU. There, it was immediately considered excellent again. Several players were eyeing its potential brokenness warily, though it wasn't quite as immediately apparent yet. This then makes what happened during this time even more bizarre. Sigilyph considered by many to be a top 5 RU Pokemon, dropped to NU by usage somehow, and was banned from NU on that very same day. Now that's broken. Back in RU, players began experimenting with Sigilis's potential beyond the brute force of its all-out offensive sets and rediscovered its old Flame Orb Combine set. This was the one that pushed it over the edge and determined it as broken. Checking it over the course of a game was nearly impossible thanks to its ridiculous longevity. Unless you face Colossus, also, you had a very strong chance of winning the long game. Now, of course, players still ran wild with Life Orb and never before seen variants began popping up. Sigilyph started using Trick, forcing crippling items like Stinky Barb or Toxic Orb onto opponents, completely ruining would be answers like Umbreon or Haze Milotic. And as a result, Sigilyph was banned from RU for the second time in the generation. It returned at the time of the Crown Tundra and it fell to NU again, and once again was hilariously, absurdly overpowered, in addition to its classic sets, it also featured on dual screens hyper offense teams, utilizing an offensive cosmic power set that held weakness policy as its item. This one often an automatic win if one didn't run into the rare dark types, and NU banned it once again. So after that, Sigilyph returned to RU, and since then it's been quite good as an offensive defogger. Once again, it uses Magic Guard to sit on passive damage from bulky stealth rockers like Registeel and Steelix, while chasing them out with Heat Wave, while its Grass Resit at high speed make it a decent Rosa rate switch. The main drawback Sigilyph has is that it doesn't offer too much beyond defogging, as for the first time ever, it's not really much of an offensive threat in RU. Umbreon existing makes sure of that, as does an Incineroar that can't get worn down by Stealth Rocks thanks to Heavy Duty Boots. This makes Sigilyph the most specific it's ever been in the tier, but it's still a legitimate piece of the metagame. Finally, Sigilyph has even brought its offensive defog set to Yu It ruins the most popular Stealth Rock setter, Hippowdon, and irritates several variants of Stealth Rock Cobalion. It ruins Skarmory's spiking attempts as well. Of course, Sigilyph is heavily flawed, as it's not too strong by UU standards, and is totally walled by popular Pokemon like Hydreigon, Mandibuzz, and Chansey, but it's got a genuine niche in the tier for the first time ever. So overall, Generation 8 has been quite wild for our bird friend.
and that's it so how good was sigil live actually well it's one of the best lower tier pokemon of all time easily it's one of the most iconic ru pokemon too being a part of the tier in some way ever since its debut generation which was the first generation of ru first it was elite and defining then it was elite and defining again then it had a solid niche in the tier then it was banned from the tier twice in the same generation before settling into another solid niche for itself ru is of course not the only tier sigil has been part of either it's been banned from nu three times including twice in generation eight and once on the very same day it was allowed in the tier and that last one is really special it was also an elite defining piece of the tier in generation seven sigil has even seen stints in yuyu and even got its start in one of the most chaotic overpowered ou metagames in history so overall sigilif has been an absolutely excellent pokemon with a rich history thanks for watching everyone and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more be sure to subscribe to false wipe gaming for more weekly pokemon content and in the comments i want to know what do you think about competitive sigilif would you nerf it how would you buff it so that it can do things in ou whatever it is let me know in the comments and thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.